Shangwa Kahla Inga Yahawa Bashem Yahu Shai Bashem Rakakwadash Double honors to the elders and the apostles, the great millstone who well, peace, blessing, society, patience goes to the whole from let the men, women, the children of the whole from let the hundred and forty four thousand. <coughs> Excuse me. And the one third remnant, men, women, and children of the whole from let Sean Wong. This is Brother Gabar Yash coming back at you with another lesson. Through the span of power, you how about Shmi I'll share praise and let's be able to find a straight to the point. I'm going to read this article from antinewsheadlines.org. Okay. <coughs> And a few brothers went in on this, so I'm going to do my take on it as well. All right, it says, Woman claims an angel of the Lord showed her four major events coming in 2025. Let's read. Are you ready for complete and utter chaos to break loose in 2025? And it's going to break loose before 2025, Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because we got this 2024 election coming up. Okay. And we're going to see how that turns out. So, and if it don't go well in either of the party's favors, that's when all hell is going to break loose, man. So, then like we say, these next four months are going to be very interesting. And we're about to go into August next week. <clears throat> next week will be August the 1st. So, let's continue. In this article, I'm going to share with you a very alarming video that a friend sent over. <clears throat> so let's skip down. Let's see. Mm. Let's start here. It says the video that contains this woman's account of what happened was posted by Joseph of the Great Miracles Avenue YouTube channel. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have come across a number of his videos before and I really like the guy. He doesn't speak English very clear, but thankfully you can easily follow along with what he is saying because his words are there for you on the bottom of the screen. If you have a few minutes, I very much encourage you to watch the entire video. It says, according to her testimony, this woman had a very unusual supernatural experience on March 26th. She got home from work at about 9 p.m. and she was quite, quite exhausted. <clears throat> she decided to take a shower and as she was getting out, she felt and hit her head. Then she had some she had some dinner and went to bed. At about 11 p.m., she heard a voice calling her. A little bit later, she once again heard a voice calling her. This voice was coming from outside, but she didn't want to go outside to see who was saying her name. After that, she was taken into a very deep sleep, and that's when she, her experience began. Okay? Basically, she had a vision. And as a matter of fact, let's get a quick scripture on this. Let's go to Joel 2 and 28, I believe. Yeah. So let's read that. Highlight that first. Joel 2 and verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. So the Lord how about Shinyal Shah is pouring his flesh up his spirit on all flesh, man. Okay? People been having dreams and visions about the impending danger to come. The, excuse me, the MOTB, World War Three, Jacob's Trouble, etc. So excuse me, Slocky, sorry about that. Alright. And hey, the Lord how about Shinyal Shah, he's doing work, man. So these people are having visions and stuff. Okay, verse 29, also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. So the Lord is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Okay, verse 30, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, 
blood and fire and pillars of smoke. So I like this. And the sun shall be and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord and Habashi Yal Shai. So the Lord and Habashi Yal Shai is giving us signs. He's showing us blood moons, okay? Wolf moons, okay? Signs in the end times, man. And Yahweh Shai told us what to look for, okay? That's we hey, to know that, hey, we're in the last days of Esau's rulership, man. And he's on his way back to deliver his elect, the elect of Israel. So let's go to Matthew 24 and verse 29. Let's read that. We're going to go back to the article. Matthew 24 and verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the he powers of the heavens shall be shaken. That's Esau's kingdom. His heaven. His rulership. His kingdom is about to be shaken. By those stars. And those stars are talking about the ICBM nuclear missiles, man. Okay? <clears throat> so we're very close. And that's all going to happen during World War Three, And, of course, the return of Yahweh Shai, man. So let's read on. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they, sh and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay? So, Yahweh Shai is coming back on that fathership chariot along with the host of angels, man. <clears throat> Verse 31. And he shall send his angels. Alright? And those angels are going to be on these small ships. And what they're going to do? With the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the, from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, so great deliverance is coming to the children of Israel, the elect man, on this side because two thirds are gonna die on this side. Okay, so without further ado, let's go back to the article. Let's read some more. Where was I, by the way? Yeah, right here. It says at one point. During the experience, it appears that she was standing outside of heaven. An angel suddenly appeared before her, and this angel told her that it was not time for her to go inside yet. This really got my attention because this is the sort of thing that I have heard in countless near-death experience. Was this woman's head injury far more serious than she realized? It says the angel told her that her work on earth had not been uh, completed yet. And she was given a message to take back. Okay. And that don't mean that a woman goes out and preach and do all that. No. Okay. A woman just basically, you know, she tells her vision. Right. And that's what a woman does. When she has a vision, she tells her vision. Okay. It don't mean she goes out and preach. No. Okay, because men are called to teach and preach the Bible, not women. Really, the elect men. Okay, that the morning how about she has chosen. In fact, the angel clearly stated that he had been sent to deliver this message to her. The angel experienced. Sorry, the angel explained that in 2025 there will be a lot more hardship than we have experienced this year. This goes right along with what. So many others have been shown as well. This woman was told that the people of Yahweh do not want to turn away from their sins and that Yahweh has sent warnings, but most have not listened. And that's true, man. Got a scripture for that. Huh. That is so true. And that's talking about the hey, the children of Israel, man, the Israelites. Because these people ain't listening to the men of the Lord. Okay? They're not. Second Chronicles 36 and 15. Let's read this. 15 and 16. Second Chronicles chapter 36 and verse 15 and 16. And the glory power of their father sent to them by his messengers 
rising up eight times and sending because he had compassion on his people, who the Lord's people, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay, all 12 tribes, okay, and on his dwelling places, but what our people do. But they mocked the messengers of Yahweh and despised his word and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord Yahweh arose against his people till there was no remedy. And two thirds that refused to get right and refused to return to Yahweh are going to die that death by pain, man. Let's get this scripture. And that death is coming for these two thirds, man. Okay. Second Chronicles 15 and verse 13. Hold on a minute. It's not getting a little tangled here. What the heck? Hold on. Hold on. It's not getting a little tangled. All right. Second Chronicles 15 and 13. That whosoever would not seek the glory and how about Shemel Shai, the power of Israel, shall be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And two thirds are destined to die on this side, man. Okay, pertaining to Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, let's get some more scriptures on that. Proverbs 13, 13. Proverbs 13, 13. Whoso despised the word shall be destroyed. Okay? And two-thirds are going to down this side because they refuse to hearken to the men of the Lord, man. They refuse to listen to the men of the Lord. That the Lord Yahabashi Yahshai sent. Okay? We're going to get another scripture on that. Proverbs 13, 13. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Okay? Now let's go to Jeremiah uh, 35 and 15. I like that. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 35 verse 15 I have sent also unto you all my servants the prophets so the Lord Yahweh Shai sent them in the Lord to warn his people like it says give them warning from me Ezekiel 3 and 17 and 18 we're gonna get that rising up early and sending them saying return ye now every man from his evil way and amend your doings and not slot and go not after other gods to serve them we're telling you to come back to the true power of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Yahweh about Shem Shai. But what our people do? They don't want to listen. Okay? And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But they have not inclined, but ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. So two thirds of our people, they don't want to listen, man. So hey. And when that time comes, man, the blood is off our hands. Highlight these. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman into the house of Israel. The Israelites. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. And that's what we're doing. We're giving you Israelites a warning, man. We're warning you of the impending danger. Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 and 7, Daniel 12 and 1, the MOTB, Revelation 13, 16 through 18. Okay? Which is the C hip, the RFID C hip, World War III. Okay? The destruction of Babylon and Great America. But our people don't want to listen. Okay? Let's read this again. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman into the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. Verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood where I require at thy hand. Okay? So the blood is off our hands, man. Okay? I like this. Verse 19. Yet if thou warned the wicked, and he turned out from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So if we don't warn our people of what's to come, that's blood on our hands, man. The Lord how about Shem Yahweh is going to require our blood. But if we warn our people and they don't listen, hey, the blood is off our hands at the end of the day. Okay? The blood is off our hands. And the times that we're coming into, 
You Israelites, you two-thirds are going to be wishing that you listen to the men of the Lord instead of going online and going on TikTok and mocking the men of the Lord, saying we're not the true prophets, we're false prophets, with this, with that. Yeah. Y'all going to regret not, hey, not listening to the men of the Lord, man, because why? The family of the word is drawing near. Let's get that scripture. And we're going to go back to the article. We're going to read some more. <clears throat> Because this is about to take place, man. The famine of the word is drawing near. Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the day is come, said the Lord, how about she on shy of power, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord, how about she on shy. So the famine of the word is drawing near. You're not, pretty soon, you're not going to see the man on YouTube platforms. You're not going to see the man on the highways and byways anymore. The time is winding down, man. And the Lord, how about you know, is about that. Hey, he's about to make this place go to a complete stop, man. Okay. Verse 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word. The Lord, how about you know, Shai shall not find it. You're not going to find this word pretty soon. Okay. This word is going to be completely gone. The men of the Lord are going to be off the highways and byways. Like it tells you in Amos 5 and... Let's just get it. Let's get it. Amos 5 and 13. Let's highlight that. <clears throat> Amos 5 and 13. Therefore the prudent shall keep silent in that time for it is an evil time. So the Lord is going to, hey, make our tongues to cleave to the roof of our mouths, man. Okay? Which means we ain't going to be able to say nothing. We're not going to be able to tell you anything. Okay? You're not going to... You run into a man of Lord, and then all of a sudden he's gonna tell you what's going on. A lot of people gonna gonna be wondering what's going on. Two thirds of our people gonna be wondering what's going on, and men of Lord are not gonna be able to tell you anything. Okay, we're gonna look at you and say we don't know what you're talking about, man. So hey, this is why we stress: get this word while you can, because time is running out, man. These devils are making their moves, and they are not wasting any time. Okay, so let's go back to the article. See, where was I? Mm, where was I? Uh, yeah, down here. Let's read down here. It says, She was t also told that Yahweh is not happy with how the leaders of the world are treating his children. Woo! <laughs> and who rules this world, man? Esau, even the so called white man. Job 924. And Yahweh Shai is not happy. Okay? Yeah, two-thirds are getting judged, okay, on this side, okay? That's judgment. When something happens to two-thirds of our people, man, just like that shit happened to that Eve, man, Sonia Massey, that was judgment at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, she's still an Israelite. So how is not happy the way these damn devils and these heathens are treating his people, man? And he is about to bring swift judgment to Esau Edom, Okay? And Esau Edom rules this world. He's the leader of this world, man. This current system. Job 9, 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And how about Shemiel Shai is about to bring heavy judgment upon Babylon, man. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, following that, the angel went through four major things which are going to happen in 2025. So let's read them. It says, the angel said... That there will be great civil unrest in 2025. Now, I think that's going to happen before 2025. We might go into 2025 with civil unrest. And yeah, it is going to happen. Okay? And that may happen before 2025. Alright? Isaiah chapter 19 verse 2. And I'll set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, man. Okay? The Lord and Habba Shion Shai is about to bring civil unrest upon this place, man. Okay? Civil war is going to break out pretty soon because these Edomites, they're pissed off that their kingdom is going down. They're not happy with the transition that's taking place. They know Jacob is rising and they're falling. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob's the beginning of it that falling. And they think Trump, <laughs> all right, they think Donald J. Trump is their last hope to save this wicked ass kingdom. But it's not, man. Let's get a couple of scriptures. This place is falling and it is falling fast. Let's get a few 
Let's get a couple of scriptures. Jeremiah 51 and verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her sake, uh, take bomb for a pain, is so she may be healed. This place will not be healed. It don't matter who gets in the White House. That's if we have an election or not. We don't know. But hey, we'll wait and see. Okay? But hey, this place is doomed, man. Regardless of who, if they get Kamala Harris in the White House or if they get Donald Trump, this place is still doomed. It's doomed for destruction. Point blank, period. Okay, verse 9, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every morning to his own country for her judgment reaching unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. So the judgment of this place has reached into the ears of the morning. How about she outside? Wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth and including Babylon. And Babylon, the great America, is the big pusher of wickedness, adultery, feminism, women's liberation, the alphabet lifestyle, you all kinds of manner of wickedness, you name it. Okay? So this place cannot be saved, man. This place will be destroyed. Okay? And civil war is going to break out. Okay? Isaiah 19 and verse 2. You know what? I like how the good news read that. Let's go to the good news translation. We'll come back. Let's go to the good news translation because I like how that good news translation read, man. Isaiah 19 and <clears throat> let's see. I'll start at verse 1. Isaiah 19 verse 1 in the good news translation. This is a message about Egypt. And that's talking about Babylon, the great America, because America is spiritual Egypt. Okay. Revelation 11 and 8. The Lord Yahweh Shemyah is coming to Egypt, riding swiftly on a cloud. That's the fathership chariot. Okay. The Egyptians idols tremble before him and the people of Egypt lose their courage. Yeah. Verse 2. The Lord Yahweh says, I will stir up civil war in Egypt and turn brother against brother and neighbor against neighbor. Rival cities will fight each other and rival kings will struggle for power, man. And this is what's coming. Civil war is coming to Babylon, the great America. Why do you think they made that movie Civil War, man, this year? Come on. These devils are telling you what's going to happen before it happens. Predictable programming. Okay. And this is where we're headed towards. Okay. Let's go back. Um, actually, no, let's stay here. Let's go to now. Let's read 2nd Israel chapter 15. In the Good News Translation. Let's go to it. 2nd Israel 15. <laughs> And sloppy. Verse 14. Second is chapter 15. Actually, hold on. Mm, I'll start at verse 11. I'm going to read all the way down to verse 19. Second is chapter 15, verse 11 in the Good News Translation. I'm going to read all the way. And I'm going to read all the way down in verse 19. I will use all my strength and power to bring them out of that land and i will bring disasters upon the egyptians as i did earlier and will and i will destroy their country that's talking about america man so the glory how about she is about to bring plagues upon this place man just like what happened in ancient egypt that's going to happen in babylon in this spiritual egypt man which is ruled by esau even the so-called white man okay and the modern day Egyptians are talking about the Edomites. Okay. Verse 12. The whole land will be in mourning. That's America. It will be shaken to its foundation when I, the Lord, how about she on I strike it and pound on it. Woo. And what's gonna what's gonna pound on this place, man? Them ICBM nuclear missiles, man. The Lord, how about she on is about to <laughs> he's about to shake this place, man. It's over with. 
Verse 13, the farmers will mourn because their seed will fail to sprout and their trees will be destroyed by blight, blight, hail, and terrible storms. And you see that, man. Heat waves, these severe thunderstorms, man. Hurricanes, okay? Destroying all the food, man, supply, man, the crops, okay? Pretty soon, you ain't going to have no running water, okay? Water shortages, all the food shortages, all this is coming up on Babylon, man, okay? Verse 14, the world and the people are, sorry, the world and the people in it are doomed. Except the Lord's hopeful let. Yeah, two-thirds of our people, these Edomites and these heathens are doomed, but not the Lord's hopeful let, okay? Verse 15, the war that will bring their destruction is very near. Nations will arm themselves and fight against another, fight against each not other nations, man. Yeah, race war, civil unrest, World War Three, you name it. Okay, verse sixteen. There will be great political turmoil. You're about to see that happen in these next few months that we're coming into. So you know, yeah, civil. War is going to break out. Civil unrest is going to break out. But that's going to happen way before 2025. We might go into 2025 with that. Okay? With one group trying to overpower another and gain control while ignoring the legitimate government. This is what's coming. Verse 17. There will be no, sorry, there will no longer be free access to the cities. Yeah. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Martial law, checkpoints. You won't be able to travel freely. Right now, you can travel freely. You can go to work, go to the grocery store, go on vacations and all that. But pretty soon, that's about to come to a halt. Okay? Verse 18. Because of the struggle, because the struggle for power will bring destruction, terror, and total confusion wherever people live. Yeah. These people are going to be afraid, man, including women. And now these women are starting to realize that, hey, they need a man. <laughs> we told you. Verse 19, driven by famine and terrible suffering, people will assault their neighbor and mercilessly ponder their possessions, man. The love of many is growing cold. People are not going to have no pity on their neighbors, man. Okay? <laughs> So we're entering into a time like no other. So let's go back to the article. Okay. Let's read this. It says. It's lucky. All right, let's go back down here. It says, all right, number one says, he said, the angel said that there will be great civil unrest in 2025. The woman saw two people fighting with each other. One was in blue and one was in red. Ooh. <laughs> hey, come on, man. Blue represents the Democrats. Red represents the Republicans. Did we not just get through reading that? Come on, man. Isaiah 19, 2, 2nd is just the 15th chapter. Did we not just get through reading that? Egyptian against Egyptian. Civil unrest. Civil war. And you're already saying that. I got an article. I got another article on the show, man. Okay. So it's about to get started here, man. Okay. She did not know what the colors mean. Well, we know what the colors mean. The blue, like I said, the blue represents the Democrats because blue, all right, is the Democratic Party. That's their color. And red is the Republican Party. Okay. She did not know what the colors mean, but those of us living in the United States certainly do. Exactly. For a long time, many of us have been warning that the outcome of the upcoming elections will unleash chaos all over the nation. And now we have yet another conf confirmation that this will indeed be the case. Exactly. Yeah. Verse looks like number two. It says the angel said that there will be economic hardship in 2025. Yeah. The collapsing of the U.S. dollar and these devils bringing in their what? 
that new digital, all right, new digital system. This is what these devils want. They want the chaos so they can bring forth the order. Order out KO. Order out of chaos. Okay. It says, of course, we are definitely experiencing plenty of economic hardship right now. Everything is high. Everything is expensive. But it sounds like it will get a lot worse during the next calendar year. Apparently, there will be a severe financial crisis and all great nations will be affected by it. And the angel also said that there will be very serious consequences. We will just have to wait and see if this prophecy is fulfilled or not. Yeah, it's going to be fulfilled. And the men of the Lord are telling you it's going to be fulfilled. Okay? And we're telling you, these devils wants to crash out the U.S. dollar so what they can do. Bring in a new digital system where you're going to be micro C-hip, okay, in order to participate in society. So all of this is coming down the pipeline, okay? Number three, she says, according to this woman, the angel also said that there will be famine. Yep. So a lot of death, a lot of famine, people about to starve, okay? But the Lord's hopeful and let. It's going to eat in that time. It says in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 13, 14, he says, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. So a lot of folks are going to starve to death, man. So let's read this. It says, That isn't much of a stretch because famines are breaking out all over the globe here in the middle, in the middle of 2024. In fact, millions are at risk of starving to death in some part of Africa by an end, by the end of 2024. And that's coming here to Babylon, man. But what, but if that, it's like, but if what this woman is saying is true, which it is saying, okay, it is true. And the men of the Lord have been warning you about this, man, okay? So, it sounds like the global food crisis is going to intensify significantly in 2025. The angel explained that there will be food shortages. The Lord, how about she said that, that there will be food shortages. Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, okay? There will be famines, pestilence, and and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay. The angel explained that there will be food shortages. And she was instructed to warn people to store up food. Uh, storing up food ain't going to matter. Okay. Because we have stored up food. Like we read in uh, Second Israel chapter 15 verse 19. Like it says. And the man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. People are going to be pondering one another. If you got up food, ammunition, women, children, yeah. Then when shit hits the fan, these people are coming for that, okay? So that ain't going to help much. And really what you're doing, you're storing up food for the whole full net, man, okay? Because like I quoted Isaiah 65, verse 12, uh, 13, 14, his, excuse me, he said his servants shall eat in that time. So when famine hits, we're going to laugh. The Lord's... Hold for neck. We're going to have an abundance. Okay. That's second. It was chapter two and verse 27. I believe. That's a matter of fact. Let's just go on and get it. Let's go on and get it. Second. It was two. Yep. Right here. Second. It was chapter two and verse 27. Be not weary for when the day of trouble. That's Jacob's trouble. And heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have an abundance. So the Lord's hopeful elect is going to have an abundance of food. The Lord is going to feed his elect, man. So let's get that scripture. Isaiah 65, verse 13 and 14. Let's read this. Isaiah 65, verse 13. Therefore, thus said the Lord, how about some y'all shy power? Behold, my servants shall eat, and you shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Verse 14. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Like, hey, do I the rest of these people, two-thirds of our people, these wicked-ass Israelites, these heathen and these Edomites out here starving to death? And hey, the Lord said his servants are going to eat in that time. The Lord Yahweh Shai is going to make a way for his servants to eat. Let's get another one. 
<clears throat> go back to the Old Testament. Let's go to Psalms 37 and verse 19 and 20, I believe. Yep, right here. Psalms 37, verse 19 and 20. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Who's that talking about? The elect. The elect is going to be satisfied. The elect is going to eat and drink and be merry and be happy. Because, hey, we're going to watch the destruction of these people. We're going to, hey, what does it say in uh, Psalms 91 and verse 8? Thou shall behold the, uh, I'm going to get it. I'm butchering it. I'm going to get it. But let's read this first. But the wicked shall perish in the enemies of the Lord. How about Shion Shai? Shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall cons they shall consume into smoke. Shall they consume away? And now they're gonna consume away. They're gonna consume away when the famine hits, and eventually when the ICBM nuclear missiles hit this place, man. Uh, let's start up a little bit. Let's start up here. I like these right quick. Psalms 91 and verse 6. Uh, actually, start up. Psalms 91 and verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walk in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. So we're not going to be afraid of these things, man. Because we know the Lord, how about Shion Shai, he got us. Verse 7, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Okay? Death is not going to come near his elect, man. Okay? The whole full elect, nor when we're part of that number. Verse 8, only with thy eyes thou shalt behold and see the reward of the wicked. We're going to see the reward of the wicked, man. And the reward of the wicked is death. Okay? Verse 9, because thou hast made the Lord Yahabashim Yahshai, which is my refuge, even the most high Yahabashim Yahshai, thy habitation. Verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Okay? Verse 11, let's highlight that. Hold on. Highlight that blue. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Okay? So the angels of the Lord, how about Shion Shah are going to protect his elect, man? So what was I? He says the angel explained that there will be food shortages, and she was instructed to warn people to store up food. I think that is very wise advice. Mm, not really, because that's not going to help much. In poorer countries, supplies of food are going to get tighter and tighter. Not just in these poor countries, and in Babylon, the Great America, too. See, a lot of these people don't think destruction is going to hit Babylon. They think it's just going to be happening in other places. No, things that are happening in other places are going to eventually happen here, but it's going to be 10 times worse here in Babylon, man. Okay? This place is doomed. In wealthier countries, the global food crisis will intentionally manifest itself through much higher food prices. That's true. Hyperinflation. You ain't going to be able to afford a carton of eggs or a carton of milk. Milk is going to be like $21. Eggs are going to be $50. Bread may be $80. You name it. Okay, those foods that you people buy is going to become a commodity. It's going to be... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for, man? Yeah, it's going to become a luxury, okay? Yeah, food, eggs, milk. The food that you people buy is going to become a luxury, okay? And that is something we are seeing right now, but it's, it's only a matter of time before we experience food shortage as well. Exactly, and we are. Okay, we already are in a way, but it's going to intensify. Okay, that's three, but nevertheless, but hey, you see what's coming, man. Okay, so this woman was given a vision. I don't know who the woman was, but hey, this woman was given a vision of what's to come. 
And men of the Lord have been telling you what's coming. It's going to be a time like no other. So let's get one more scripture and we're going to wrap it up. I didn't intend for this lesson to be that long, but that's okay. Daniel 12 and 1, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince when standing for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, that's Jacob's trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Only the elect are going to survive these times that we're coming into. Okay? Um... It's mm, another scripture I had. Oh, come, come. I got it now. Second is a sixteen and eighteen. Yeah. Second is chapter sixteen, verse eighteen. The beginning of sorrows and great mournings. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? We're in the beginning of evils. Okay. So I like these right quick. We're going to read these scriptures and then we we'll close it out right here. And we're going to make the point. Okay. Verse 19. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scores for amendment to correct your Israelites, man, to wake you up to realize the times that we're living in. Verse 20, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Verse 21, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. That's what you're seeing happening. Evils are multiplying. Evils are growing. And it's not going to get no better. Going into maybe next year. Okay? Really going to start by getting close to the end of the year. Okay? The economic turmoil, the civil war that's about to break out here in Babylon. People are pissed off. Okay? People are angry. People are furious. Okay? Hopeless. Second Israel 16, verse 22. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the others that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Verse 23. And the dead shall be cast out as dung, and, the, and there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down. So cities are going to be burning real soon, man. Let me show this quick article right quick. Because it's all about to begin, man. Okay. And this was judgment, but hey, this is getting ready to happen here. Okay. This is from the People's Voice TV. It says, 80-year-old grandpa... Placing Trump signs in yards brutally mowed down by liberal activists. So shit is about to get crazy here in Babylon, man. Okay? Things are about to get crazy here in Babylon, man. You see it. People who are against Trump are going to start attacking people who are for Trump. And people who are for Kamala Harris are going to start attacking people. People for Kamala Harris are going to start getting attacked by people who are for uh, Trump. Okay? Like you said in that article, man. She said she saw two people fighting. Right? Blue and red. The Egyptian against Egyptians. The Republicans against the Democrats. Democrats against Republicans. Okay? So that civil war is about to break out here in Babylon, man. It is very close at hand. It says a Michigan grandfather who was placing Trump signs in his front yard was brutally run down by a 22-year-old liberal activist who jumped the curb and mowed sorry, and plowed into the 80-year-old man after tearing tearing the size down man so <laughs> shit look shit is getting crazy out here man it's gonna get worse these are the times that we're in man i'm not gonna read the rest of this i'll put it in the description box okay so things are about to get crazy here in babylon man so with that i hope this lesson was edifying and straight to the point all praises and glorifications go see how about some y'all shine by shinrakak with dash stay circumspect Names about to go down. So on to the next one. Shawan. Kwame Yashwara and the Bible Paul. Shawan.